Hello, knowledge seekers. In this episode of 20 Minute Books, we will dive into Moneyball, written by the critically acclaimed author Michael Lewis. This engrossing read illustrates the story of the Oakland Athletics, a major league baseball team that daringly defied the conventional wisdom of sports management. Guided by the innovative leadership of general manager Billy Bean, the team leverages the power of sabermetrics, a rigorous data-driven approach to form a competitive roster. Lewis, highly regarded for his eloquent distillation of complex financial topics, has made significant contributions to finance and economics literature. His portfolio includes standout bestsellers like The Big Short, Liar's Poker, and Flash Boys. Moneyball is sure to captivate sports enthusiasts with its refreshing perspective on baseball strategy. Additionally, this book is a must-read for data analysts intrigued by the transformative power of data and business strategists who can glean insightful tactics from Bean's revolutionary approach. Tune in as we distill the striking narrative and key concepts of Moneyball into an engaging 20-minute summary. It's Moneyball, the art of winning an unfair game. Introduction. What can you extract? Understand the power of creative solutions, change, and resilience. In the early 2000s, the economic divide between the wealthiest and the underfunded Major League Baseball teams was remarkably profound. The Oakland Athletics, also known as the Oakland A's, were stuck in a tough spot. They had the second smallest budget and were expected to compete with the top tier teams flaunting extravagant payrolls. It was a seemingly insurmountable challenge. Something needed to change. Enter Billy Bean a once on-field player who transitioned into a management role. Bean recognized that the conventional ways of baseball wouldn't drive them towards success. The age-old scouting techniques and strategies to assemble a competitive team were becoming obsolete. In this exciting exploration, you'll learn how Bean challenged the traditional norms of baseball and led his team towards triumph. This powerful journey will inspire you to question entrenched beliefs and to discover success in your personal and professional arenas by challenging the status quo. Part 1. Empower your leadership through decisions driven by data. For a century and a half, the world of Major League Baseball was dominated by deeply rooted customs and personal conjectures. However, following a calamitous 2001 draft, Billy Bean knew it was time to overhaul his traditional methods of evaluating talent. Acknowledging the shortcomings of heavily relying on subjective scouting, Bean pivoted towards an analytical approach, intertwining data and rational thinking. Together with his associate, Paul Depodesta, they employed statistical analysis and data algorithms to scout undervalued players. Bill James, an innovative writer and statistician, pioneered this radical shift. He recognized the latent power in baseball statistics and invented metrics that shed new light on player performance. He significantly altered the perception of player contributions by switching the emphasis from plain batting averages to the generation of runs. James's unconventional method attracted a growing circle of academics and statisticians who assembled under the banner of sabermetrics a discipline devoted to investigating and interpreting baseball data. Those applying sabermetrics were said to be playing money ball. Traditional club scouts dedicate years to unearthing hidden gems, prioritizing physical prowess and previous performance records. In a nutshell, they were fixated on players possessing the right stuff. Their penchant for high school athletes, particularly pitchers, was at odds with statistical findings. Bill James posited that college players offered greater value than their high school counterparts, a perspective the Oakland A's adopted in their 2002 drafting strategy. This led to Oakland carving out a unique niche in the market. Despite budget constraints, Bean managed to secure the overlooked nobodies he had his sights on. This deviation from tradition provoked fury among the old guard. Even with increasing data accessibility, 
general managers were reluctant to leverage it. Insiders, fearing drastic change, held fast to their familiar ways. The ire among scouts was palpable. How could years of expertise and first-hand observations be discounted so easily? The truth was that decision-making rooted in data was inherently more valuable. For the Oakland A's, it revolutionized the talent evaluation process, and the outcome was nothing short of phenomenal. Part 2. Braving Hurdles and Combating Opposition to Transformation Understanding that personal biases introduce market inefficiencies, Bean took a gamble on undervalued players brimming with latent potential. He dismissed concerns about a player's appearance, or if they didn't fit the stereotypical mold of an athlete. He made a daring move in the first round of the 2002 draft, picking Jeremy Brown, a robust catcher, primarily due to his exceptional hitting abilities. This move overlooked the apprehension of Oakland scouts. In fact, there was a fleeting moment where Bean contemplated firing the entire scouting team. His determination to prioritize talent and performance over public opinion demonstrated his unwavering commitment to data-driven decisions. Oakland continued its winning streak, outpacing richer competitors. While the Moneyball strategy emphasized the role of data in decision-making, it's crucial to remember that baseball isn't just about numbers. Off the field, Bean implemented additional strategies. He adhered to specific rules for recruiting players, consistently endeavoring to upgrade the team and acknowledging each player's worth. He traded off picks to generate funds and constantly aimed to diminish a competitor's interest in their targets. Despite the A's victories, Bean had to weather criticism and ridicule from all corners. General managers, scouts, writers, commentators, they all questioned his motives and branded him as self-obsessed. But why did he face such widespread backlash? Author Michael Lewis posits that baseball culture is built around a cycle of scouting young talent, expressing opinions, and awaiting better opportunities. Moneyball represented a threat to those entrenched in their positions. Naturally, revealing flaws in the system would incite resistance. However, the remarkable success of the Oakland Athletics shook up the old establishment. The game now underscores the undervalued aspects, such as walks, extra base hits, the real significance of batting averages, and the strategic importance of stolen bases. Other Major League Baseball teams like the Boston Red Sox and the Toronto Blue Jays swiftly hired executives influenced by Bean's innovative methods. Bean had indeed revolutionized how the game was played and managed, who was deemed suitable to play, and the underlying reasons why. Final summary, Moneyball ignited a split in the baseball community. Critics argue that the heightened reliance on statistics has downgraded other facets of the game, like teamwork and camaraderie. Supporters, on the other hand, believe the approach has leveled the playing field and offered disadvantaged teams a fair shot. Regardless of differing viewpoints, it's hard to overlook the pervasive influence of Moneyball beyond the baseball diamond. Its successful implementation has led various organizations and franchisees to adopt data-driven decision-making. The undeniable value of this data-centric approach can no longer be dismissed, particularly in the wake of the Oakland A's smashing the American League record with 20 consecutive victories. Thank you for joining me today on this journey of learning and discovery as we explored the insights of another thought-provoking book in our growing library of knowledge. If you've enjoyed our time together, please take a moment to follow our podcast, give us a five-star rating, and share 20-minute books with other knowledge seekers. Your support truly means a lot. Don't forget to join me again in the next episode, where we will delve into another enriching book. Until then. Happy reading and happy listening.